Hello, this is Kevin, and I will be talking about the interactivity of my game. In this script, this is my door opening script, where if the character walks close to the door, they will automatically open for them, so none of like the players have to take their time to run away from the creature to open the door manually. So. This part here pretty much says when the player is near, activate the animation for the door opening, which is here. And then, and this is pretty much saying when the player is not near, stop the animation to allow the player to see the door close as they're walking away from it. And that's my door opening script. Uh, this is my player movement scripts, so this is everything you need for the script, so jumping, facing, like which way they're facing, the uh, a animations, and the movement speed. This part is pretty much saying, uh, well, this whole part here, it's pretty much saying when you press the left arrow key, it will turn left right here with the false and then this part is saying when you press the right arrow key the animation will force you to change to the right side because it's true false true pretty much saying no yes easy as that and then this part here it's in the is the movement speed. So this allows you to change the movement speed right here. So I have it on five, so it's an equal distance away from the creatures and everything. You can also change the creature's movement speed in their script, which w is two for me, well, for that guy. And then this last area is for uh, the jumping. This pretty much allows the rigged body to accept you to press spacebar to force you to go up in the air and move your whole box glider and the animation to allow it to move. This here allows you to change the height of the jump. So when you're actually jumping within the game, you can go higher than whatever you're jumping over. So I have I have a bunch of roots here, and you can jump right over them with the sixth, with the sixth height, and that is high enough for all of my things to be jumped over. Now this is my monster script. It's called Move Left because it originally started with this part, which very much forces the creature to always be moving left, without a rigid body, so it doesn't fall to the floor as soon as it reaches an area where it just has no floor. This part forces the creature when it touches the player to restart the game from the point where it actually starts from, which is the room for me when I get there. And this, this is my jump script. Well, my original jump script. This one didn't work just because I didn't have my rigged body set to RB. My rigged body is set to rigged, my rigged body. So when I implemented this jump script, I had to change m every RB bit to my rigged body to allow it to, j allow it to work. This part is set to RB. See, it's all set to RB. So if you tried this jump script, it wouldn't work unless your rigged body was set to RB, which you would need this line of code for. Alright, now I'm going to show how everything works. Oh, and I did have a falling part, like a falling over aspect of my game. To activate that, you just click the player, and then you go to your rigged body 2D, and then turn off the freeze rotation Z. That allows it, so if it goes over any bumps or anything like that, you'll fall over, and eventually I'm going to add a box glider to his head, so when his head collides with the floor, 
it will instantly restart the game as well as when the creature touches you. So you can move left and right, you can jump, and then when the creature touches you, it restarts the game. Alright, so that is my tutorial.